9. Misty Loman In 2019, a series of mugshots documenting a 40-year-old Kentucky woman's descent into methamphetamine addiction went viral. But the pictures only told one side of the story. According to Misty Loman, who came forward and shared her story in 2020 after getting sober, the Bowling Green resident's addictions spiraled out of control after losing several after losing several close family members. Around the same time, Misty was diagnosed with lupus, bone cancer, and a condition called scleroderma, which is characterized by the hardening of the skin. And while her drug use affected her appearance, her ailing health also played a role. She lost her hair, her teeth began falling out, she became gaunt from weight loss, and most people thought her drug use was entirely responsible for her concerning transformation. Misty later told local station WBKO that she didn't think she had long to live, and that her original plan was to get high until she died. She was homeless, plagued by depression, and was in and out of jail at least 15 times as she continued turning to drugs to cope with her struggles. During one of her low points, Loman allegedly showed up for a court hearing high on meth and was arrested for having a bag of the suspected drug in her possession. At the urging of her children, Misty eventually turned to religion and found the strength to get sober. She has reportedly been sober for three years, is no longer homeless, and is reportedly enjoying her new drug-free lifestyle. 8. Shauna Hillsman When a New Jersey woman named Shauna Hillsman was busted for allegedly breaking into cars in early 2019, she stared straight at the camera and proudly flashed both her middle fingers in her mugshot. Hillman was accused of targeting multiple vehicles during a spree of car burglaries and was reportedly captured on camera trying to break into at least one vehicle. According to the Spotswood Police, Arresting officers found a screwdriver, hammer, and a flashlight in her possession during her arrest. She was charged with criminal trespass, burglary, and possession of burglary tools. About a year and a half later, Hillsman was arrested for another alleged string of burglaries in Monroe Township. Bust came during a surveillance operation that police carried out following a spike in car break-ins. According to a police report, Officers watched as Hillsman parked her car along a street during the early morning hours and exited the vehicle wearing gloves and all black clothing. Law enforcement made their presence known while the suspect was in the middle of trying to break into a pickup truck in someone's driveway. Hillsman was apprehended after a short foot chase and hit with another handful of burglary-related charges. But it's unclear whether she gave the mugshot camera a two-finger salute this time around. 7. Reginald Kinser One of America's largest retirement communities, known as the Villages, can be found northwest of Orlando in central Florida. Perhaps not surprisingly, this 55 and up community has a high demand for drugs that are meant to improve one's performance in the bedroom. A resident named Reginald Kinser, 77 years old, allegedly tried to capitalize on this niche market by illegally peddling off-brand medications in October 2023 but he ended up getting busted by federal authorities before he could move the estimated $1,800 worth of product that was found in his house. The Department of Justice is accusing Kinser of having the drugs shipped to his residence from out of state with plans to sell them locally and to customers outside Florida. If convicted as charged, he could face up to a year in prison and a fine of up to $10,000. Didn't stop him from flashing a wide grin for his mugshot which looked almost as if he was thrilled to be in custody. At the time of his arrest, Kinser was serving a three-year probation sentence for a previous possession charge from 2020, when he was caught with MDMA, psychedelic mushrooms, and marijuana. His neighbors are reportedly disappointed about his more recent arrest, and even more so about the seizure of his inventory. In a brief interview with local station WESH2, he said that the authorities are trying to do the right thing, and I'm trying to do the right thing too. 6. Christina Pasqualetto It's rare for anyone to smile in their mugshot, let alone when they're injured or arrested on serious charges. But 62-year-old Christina Pasqualetto 
did just that in September 2023, when she flashed a large grin for the camera despite having two black eyes and facing an attempted murder charge. Pasqualetta was arrested in Yavapai County, Arizona, after a last-ditch attempt to save her marriage went terribly wrong. She drove two hours from Gilbert to her 80-year-old estranged husband John's home in Prescott in hopes of talking him out of a divorce. Christina arrived at the residence around midnight, and it wasn't long before she and John began to argue. According to police, Pasqualetto shot her husband in the wrist while he was laying in bed, after he made it clear that he wanted a divorce and wasn't willing to negotiate. John Pasqualetto told investigators that he managed to knock the gun out of Christina's hand, and that he struck her several times in self-defense. Thankfully, his injuries were non-life-threatening. He also mentioned that he had previously changed the locks on his home, but that Christina had somehow managed to continue finding her way inside. Just a week prior, John had accused his soon-to-be ex-wife of breaking into his house and forging a check for $10,000. In addition to being charged with attempted first-degree murder, Christina is facing aggravated assault, forgery, and theft charges. 5. James Gina III in August 2023, a heavily tattooed murder suspect from Las Vegas went viral for his unusual artwork, which included a pair of glasses inked onto his face and a set of horns on top of his shaved head. 50-year-old James Gina III was arrested after police found his girlfriend, Selena Rebholz, dead with 12 gunshot wounds. Witnesses reported to officers that they had overheard Gina and Rebholz arguing earlier that day. One person described Gina as a short-tempered meth user and said that they heard him threatening to kill his mother when she tried to intervene in the argument. According to police, Gina kept his girlfriend's body in the attic for two days. He allegedly planned to rent a car to move it with because he didn't want the odor of decomposition to infiltrate his own car, but was arrested before he could follow through. Gina was charged with one count of open murder with a deadly weapon, along with a gun-related count. A review board will decide whether to pursue the death penalty. 4. Amber Shuren Rusnak 25-year-old Amber Shuren Rusnak was all smiles while being booked and processed into custody in Brevard County, Florida, on suspicion of aggravated battery and carjacking. She was arrested in October 2023 for allegedly beating her own mother, stealing her car, and running her over with it. A neighbor called 911 as the chaos unfolded in front of the victim's home in Coco. By the time officers arrived at the scene, Shurin Rusnak had fled. Her mother was rushed to the hospital in critical condition while law enforcement searched for the rampaging young woman, who was reportedly caught trying to hide on foot after ditching the stolen car. Authorities declined to go into detail about what Shurin Rusnak and her mom were arguing about, but by then, the woman's run-ins with the cops had basically become business as usual. It was her fourth arrest of 2023 alone, and her tenth in five years. Her previous charges include domestic battery, drug possession, and prostitution. She's being held on a seven-figure bond while awaiting the next steps in her current case. 3. Cole Carini In mid-2020, a 23-year-old Virginia man named Cole Carini entered a health clinic with one hand blown off and several fingers missing from his other hand. His face and neck were covered in shrapnel wounds. Carini claimed that he had gotten into a lawnmower accident, but law enforcement was quick to notice that his injuries were more consistent with an explosion. During a search of the young man's home, Federal agents noticed that the grass hadn't been cut recently. They also found a large amount of a chemical called triacetone triperoxide, which is a common ingredient of homemade explosives and other materials for building pipe bombs, along with a trail of blood and chunks of flesh in the room where the explosion occurred. At the time, Carini was on probation for previous explosive-related charges. Even after being confronted with a damning pile of evidence in his more recent case, he stubbornly stuck to his story, insisting that he had overturned his lawnmower while cutting his grass. He was charged with multiple crimes, including lying to federal agents. 
Further investigation turned up a trove of disturbing writings detailing Carini's dark thoughts. He was a self-described incel, despite having a steady girlfriend of two years. And he allegedly idolized mass shooter Elliot Roger, a fellow involuntary celibate who murdered six people in 2014. Carini also wrote about ways that he thought the 2013 Boston Marathon bombers could have inflicted more damage and fantasized about killing hot cheerleaders. In early 2023, he pleaded guilty to one count of possessing and manufacturing an unregistered explosive device. He was sentenced to seven years in federal prison, and he'll spend the rest of his life living with his missing hand and fingers. 2. Sandra Lynn Henson 56-year-old Sandra Lynn Henson looks more like a prim and proper middle-class housewife than a typical inmate, which is why she seemed wildly out of place in a mugshot that circulated in 2023. But the Mississippi native is no stranger to crime. In fact, she's a repeat offender who allegedly uses her unassuming appearance to her advantage by crashing weddings and stealing gifts from newlywed couples. Henson's first conviction for her unusual crime of choice came in 2017. She was put on probation, but it failed to stop her from striking again in 2019, when she was arrested for stealing from weddings in northern Alabama. While she only faced charges in connection with two thefts, authorities claimed that she had been linked to thefts at nine different weddings throughout the state, all while she was still on probation for her past crimes. Victims from Tennessee and Mississippi also came forward with allegations against Henson, telling police that they saw her taking money and gift envelopes out of people's purses inside changing rooms during receptions. Henson was arrested several more times over a five-year period, landing her a five-year prison sentence in Mississippi for burglary and grand larceny. She was scheduled to remain behind bars until 2025, but was paroled early. Her most recent arrest for petty larceny, trespassing, and disturbing the peace came in September 2023. The serial thief was already wanted in Alabama when she was nabbed for allegedly stealing from a wedding in Mississippi. Newlywed Lexi Loden Butler told NBC News that Henson stole $200 out of someone's purse and then helped herself to a piece of wedding cake. She gave the money back after people realized that she didn't belong at the event. The bride's sister said that she went through Henson's purse and found a handwritten list containing the locations of at least seven other weddings. Despite Henson begging the family not to call the police, they did anyway. When the bride found out what happened, she was initially worried that Henson was homeless or hungry. But all sympathy went out the window when people began Googling the woman's name and saw that she had turned wedding crashing into a literal lifestyle. She's currently out on bond pending the outcome of her case. And now for number one. But if you want to hear even more stories, stay tuned for some extra content that you might have missed. 1. Miguel Gonzalez Rosales Shortly after Easter in 2023, a 36-year-old murder suspect from North Carolina went viral for his demonic-looking mugshot which featured a stone-cold glare and showed his face covered in bloody scratches. 36-year-old Miguel Gonzalez Rosales stands accused of killing his neighbor. 35-year-old Laura Miller, who was found mutilated beyond recognition at her apartment in East Charlotte. The murderer had bound the victim's neck and ankles, burned her thighs, cut her tongue out, and slashed her from her neck to her belly button. Before stealing Miller's car and fleeing the scene, the killer dumped salt all over her body and surrounded it with pieces of a broken table that had been arranged in the shapes of three crosses. The scene was so gruesome that blood trickled out into the hallway and down to the floor below. And the apartment was scattered with human tissue and body parts, including the victim's tongue, which was found in the dining room. After noticing the blood seeping out from beneath the front door, neighbors called the police. Law enforcement arrested Gonzalez Rosales during a traffic stop shortly after the discovery of Miller's body. He was charged with murder, destroying remains, and concealing a death and auto theft. According to police, Miller and Gonzalez Rosales knew each other, but they weren't friends. 
They were frequently overheard arguing by residents of their apartment building, including one person who told local station WSOC that Gonzales Rosales had showed up at Miller's apartment with a baseball bat three days before her murder. The witness claimed that Gonzales Rosales ordered Miller to open her front door and threatened to kill her. Criminology expert Mitchell McInem told WSOC that demonic murders like this are extremely rare. One of the charges the suspect faces, destroying remains and concealing a death, is so seldom seen in North Carolina's courts that only 10 people have been charged with it in the last decade. Another expert, Charisse Costin, told the outlet that in most cases, these types of killings are not rooted in any genuine beliefs in Satanism or the occult. At the same time, it's hard not to wonder if Gonzales Rosales was taken over by an otherworldly evil after seeing the chilling expression on his face in his mugshot. 9. Sabina Salimovic and Samra Kasinovic and what could best be described as a parent's worst nightmare, two teenage girls fled their family homes in Vienna, Austria in 2014 to join the Islamic State terrorist group in Syria. At ages 15 and 16 at the time, Sabina Salimovic and Samra Kasinovic left a note to their parents stating, Don't look for us. We will serve Allah and we will die for him. The pair went on to appear in ISIS propaganda, which showed them mingling with jihadis and carrying Kalashnikovs. Just months later, news broke that one of the girls, believed to be Sabina, died while fighting the fight. The other girl, Samra, vanished. Word of her whereabouts went silent for several months until reports surfaced claiming that an ISIS member caught her trying to flee and beat her to death with a hammer. A Tunisian woman who claimed she was kept at the same house as Samra came forward in light of the tragedy. She said that the young woman was used as a sex slave and that she was a gift for new fighters. Samra reportedly tried to escape numerous times before she was killed. 8. Rejecting New Technology Back in 1975, a young engineer named Steve Sanson invented a camera that recorded black and white photos to cassette tapes. It was the world's first digital camera. Each photo took 23 seconds to produce and could only be viewed on a television screen. Sanson showed his invention to some executives at Eastman Kodak, but the high-profile execs scoffed at the device. They couldn't imagine a world where people would want to view pictures on a screen. Speaking with the New York Times, Sasson explained that print photography had been the company's bread and butter for over a century. He said that prints were inexpensive and nobody complained about them. In other words, why fix something that isn't broken? And although the bigwigs at Eastman Kodak shot down Sasson's idea, they also told him not to tell anyone about it. The company resisted digital photography for 18 years, and its reluctance to change eventually caught up with it. In 2012, Eastman Kodak filed for bankruptcy. 7. Infamous Infidelity Tiger Woods is undoubtedly one of the greatest golfers of all time. He hit the peak of his career around 2009, and it seemed like he had it all. On top of being the number one name in golf, he had a beautiful wife, two children, a mansion in Florida, and more money than most of us could ever dream of. All that changed one day in November 2009 when news broke that Woods was having an affair with a New York City nightclub hostess named Rachel Uchitel. Within days, another woman, Jamie Grubbs, came forward and admitted that she was also seeing Woods behind his wife, Elon Nordegren's back. Fourteen more women came forward over the next few weeks, and that was just the beginning. It's believed that Woods had as many as 120 mistresses. His marriage ended, and he lost lucrative promotional partnerships with major brands like Nike, Gatorade, and Gillette. Woods owned his behavior. After all, it was well past the point of him being able to deny it and checked into rehab for sex addiction. In 2017, just when it seemed like he had managed to put his checkered past behind him, Woods was arrested for driving under the influence. He returned to rehab, this time for his addiction to prescription painkillers. 
But Tiger Woods made an impressive comeback, and he managed not to destroy his career. In fact, it recently seemed as though he was doing just as good as, if not better, than how he was doing before the cheating scandal made headlines around the world. An insider source told the press in early 2020 that Woods was a changed man that he was focusing on his kids and his career, and that he and his ex-wife were getting along and co-parenting peacefully. He even began dating again, without cheating, according to news reports. Not long after that, however, Woods crashed his car while going 86 miles per hour, 138 kilometers per hour, in a 45 mile per hour, 72 kilometer per hour zone. He was seriously injured and is still healing, and it's unknown whether he will return to professional golf. Luckily, his girlfriend, Erica Herman, is standing by him through his recovery. 6. Big Business Betrayal In 1989, Nintendo and Sony collaborated in secret to create a CD-based video game console. They named the device the Nintendo PlayStation and they announced their plans for the game system to the world in 1991. But executives at Nintendo grew increasingly paranoid that Sony would use the deal as an opportunity to establish itself in the video game market. Days after news broke of the up-and-coming console, Nintendo backed out of the agreement and went to work with Sony's rival, the Dutch company Philips. As it turned out, Sony engineer and project leader Ken Kataragi had indeed been acting on his vision of getting Sony into the gaming business. After being elbowed out by Nintendo, the company's president greenlighted the creation of Sony Computer Entertainment a new division that would focus solely on video games. It took considerable time and effort, but Sony eventually convinced game developers that 3D graphics were the next big thing. Slowly but surely, big-name companies got behind this ambitious vision, including Japanese arcade firm Namco, which abandoned Nintendo in favor of Sony. The Sony PlayStation launched in 1994. During its first year, it was outcompeted by Nintendo's Sega, but, as any modern gaming enthusiast knows, the PlayStation became wildly successful. In fact, it's the top-selling console of all time. What system do you play? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 5. A Deadly Shortcut in May 1846, a group of 87 settlers left Missouri for California in covered wagons. They set out a month later than they should have, hoping to reach their destination within four months, and they only took enough food to last them precisely that long. By the time the group reached Fort Laramie, Wyoming, they were already a week behind schedule. Hoping to make up for lost time, they traveled the newly established Hastings Cutoff Route. It would trim 300 miles, 483 kilometers, off their journey and seemed like a no-brainer. But the route's promoter, Langsford Hastings, had never actually traveled the Hastings Cutoff. Several people warned the settlers that it was dangerous and not to take it, but they took their chances anyway. Hastings had agreed to guide the party through the trail, but he failed to keep his word and went ahead with another group. The settlers found themselves hacking through dense foliage in the mountains to make room for their wagons to pass. Then they reached the Great Salt Lake Desert, where the sand had turned to mud. They had to ditch most of their belongings just to lighten their wagon loads, but their oxen were still too weak to pull. Many of the animals died or ran away. After traversing the Hastings Cutoff, the group resumed traveling along the main trail. By then, they were more than a month behind and were quickly running out of food. A catastrophic blizzard trapped them in the Sierra Nevada mountains for the entire winter. At first, the settlers ate their cattle. Then they ate leather, tree bark, and even their own hide shelters. In a final act of desperation, they resorted to cannibalism, eating the remains of fallen party members who had succumbed to their dire circumstances. You may have heard of the group, infamously known as the Donner Party, and now you know that their ill-fated mission resulted from a string of bad decisions. 4. Why Blockbuster Went Bust 
If you're old enough to remember the days of going to the store to rent DVDs, or maybe even VHS tapes, surely you've been to a blockbuster. At one point, the business was a household name. Today, there's only one blockbuster left. The independently operated store is located in Bend, Oregon, and it's doing its best to stay in business. So, what happened? Netflix began as a DVD rental by mail service in 1997. A decade later, it introduced paid streaming services. Naturally, people stopped going to stores like Blockbuster and opted for the convenience of having movies delivered to their home or watching them online. Unable to keep up with the competition, Blockbuster declared bankruptcy in 2010. But it didn't have to be this way. In 2000, Blockbuster CEO John Antioco sat down with Netflix co-founders Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph, who offered to sell Netflix to Antioco for $50 million. At the time, Netflix was suffering from the effects of the dot-com crash, and it wasn't making as much money as hoped. Randolph later recalled in his book, That Will Never Work, that Antioco struggled not to laugh at the offer. The blockbuster bigwig rejected the opportunity and failed to make a counteroffer, making it pretty clear that he flat out wasn't interested in acquiring Netflix. The last corporate blockbuster closed in 2014. Meanwhile, Netflix skyrocketed in value and is alive and well today with an estimated worth of nearly 33 billion. 3. A Costly Mistake Many people dream of winning the lottery knowing it'll probably never happen, but it would be infinitely worse to know that you had a winning ticket and lost it or accidentally threw it away. It reportedly happened to a British woman back in 2010. She was in her 70s at the time and believed she had chosen the winning numbers to the Euro millions, according to a notebook she kept of her entries. But her husband allegedly threw the ticket out by mistake, causing a 130 million pound fortune to pass on by. The anonymous would-be winner told the press that she was initially angry at her forgetful spouse of over 50 years, but that she found it in her heart to forgive him. This is just one example of someone coming close to winning big bucks, only to be denied their pot of gold due to unforeseen circumstances. Earlier this year, a young British couple thought they had instantly become rich when the Euro millions picked their numbers, but they soon realized that their payment for the ticket hadn't gone through because their bank account didn't have enough money in it. Another couple chose winning Euro Millions numbers back in 2001, but were unable to cash in on the three million pound prize. The numbers had been announced six months earlier when the pair saw an appeal for the winner to come forward. They had lost the ticket, so they had the lottery operator check their computer records to confirm their numbers. Little did the couple realize they only had 30 days from the appeal to claim their winnings, and by then, 45 days had gone by. They missed their payoff by just 15 days. The distress of the situation led to a divorce and the husband spent years fighting in court for access to the money, but he ultimately lost the case. 2. A Sweet Deal In 1981, Steven Spielberg began working on the movie E.T., by then, he had already made several successful films, including Jaws and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Those who have seen E.T. probably recall a scene where nine-year-old Elliot uses candy to lure an alien out of the forest. The filmmaking company Amblin Productions had approached Mars Incorporated, the maker of M&Ms, about the possibility of featuring their candy in the scene. Mars chief executives John and Forrest Mars rejected the offer for reasons that remain unclear to this day. There are a variety of rumors claiming that the company didn't want to be associated with a movie about an alien, they thought the storyline was too otherworldly, and or didn't think people would like the movie. But the plain and simple truth is that nobody knows for sure why Mars turned down the opportunity to feature its product in what became a massive blockbuster success. The filmmakers then went to Hershey, which eagerly accepted the offer to use its Reese's Pieces in the scene. At the time, the candy had only been on the market for two years. Sales tripled within two weeks of E.T.'s release. 
Jack Dowd, Hershey's vice president for new business development, certainly didn't regret the decision. For $1 million, the company received an estimated $15 to $20 million worth of promotion through the film. Meanwhile, Mars reportedly denied ever having received an offer. 1. Fiesta Turned Forest Fire Imagine going down in history as one of the people responsible for a devastating forest fire. It's the reality that Refugio Manuel Jimenez Jr. and Angela Rene Jimenez face after a smoke bomb at their unborn baby's gender reveal party sparked a massive blaze in California last year. The expectant parents orchestrated the poorly timed stunt at the height of wildfire season. A smoke bomb malfunctioned, setting flames to the surrounding forest. By the time the fire started, it was spreading too quickly to put out. It burned for over two months and devastated at least 22,000 acres, 8,903 hectares, of land in Southern California. At least four homes were destroyed, several other structures were ruined or damaged, numerous firefighters were seriously injured, and one person died. Police charged the couple with manslaughter and several other charges relating to their reckless behavior. If they are found guilty, the pair could spend up to 20 years each in prison. This is just one example of several gender reveal parties gone wrong that have graced news headlines in recent years. And while it's understandable to want to creatively announce your baby's gender to family and friends, these stories serve as sobering reminders that it's best to deliver the news in a safe way. Number 10. The Vampire Couple how many of you wanted a vampire as your partner after watching Twilight? 20-year-old Leah Benninghoff and 38-year-old Aro Draben are the real-life Edward and Bella. Aro, who claims to be a vampire in Goth, met Leah on a dating site in 2013. The duo instantly hit it off. Leo found Aro's vampire persona hypnotic and intriguing. After three weeks of dating, Aro proposed, and they've been living together ever since. Since they were spending the rest of eternity together, Aro decided to turn his lady love into a vampire. In an interview, Leah said Aro turned her early in the morning, during witch hunting hours. He cut the back of his arm and offered his blood to her, and she did the same for him. She even mentioned that it took a day for the transformation to finish, and the experience was unreal. Now, if she hasn't had any blood in a long time, she feels weak. The couple made a ritual of drinking each other's blood once a week, and they even enjoy having raw steaks over a glass of pig's blood. Whether they go around biting people at night or sparking in the sunshine, we aren't sure, but it'd definitely be interesting to find out. Number 9. I Love Myself the Most Loving yourself is the first step in self-care, but one man took loving himself way too far. Liu Yi, a man from China, married himself back in 2007. Wondering how? Well, first, he got dressed for the occasion in a red tux and had professional photos taken. Then, he printed one of the photos onto a life-size cardboard cutout and married it. 100 guests attended the wedding. Most of them found the event quite confusing, while others said it was a grand wedding. One woman said that at first, she thought that it would be a group wedding. Among the guests was a psychologist. He described the marriage and Lou's behavior as abnormal. He said that psychologically, he seemed to be unwell. There's no doubt about that. In an interview, Yi said the reason he married himself was his dissatisfaction with reality. Also, it was a process of deconstructing and reconstructing himself. He said many might find his behavior ridiculous, but he is a fairly traditional man. His views on marriage just happen to be different from the norm. He even admitted to being a bit narcissistic, which we could have guessed. Can you imagine going on a date with yourself made out of cardboard? Number 8. Age is just a number We all know age doesn't really matter when it comes to falling in love. Age is just a number, right? But some relationships push that idea to the max. Mackenzie Yukum and Jeff Scholl have an age difference of 36 years. You might be saying, heard that before, but Mackenzie, 25, was initially engaged to Jeff's son, whom she had dated for six years. They were high school sweethearts. When she was with him, the 61-year-old Jeff, her would-be father-in-law was going through a divorce. Like a good soon-to-be daughter-in-law, she became a pillar of comfort, but little did they know that comfort was quickly turning into love. 
They soon started having an affair and eventually were caught by Jeff's wife and his son. Mackenzie didn't regret having an affair with Jeff after getting caught. She broke off her engagement and moved in with Jeff, and now they have a baby boy. Both Jeff and Mackenzie's family cut their ties, which doesn't seem to bother the strange couple. Still, Mackenzie is ready to apologize to all the people she hurt. Jeff even said that he wants to reconcile with his son soon, but how do you fix a relationship after such a shocking betrayal? Number seven, my fiance is a doll. We've seen getting married to yourself, but what about marrying a doll? Jia Tainrong from Hong Kong lives with his parents and is married to a sex doll. Jia learned about his love for dolls at the age of 25. He wanted one sooner, but they were too expensive. Earlier in life, he had relationships with human girlfriends, but now he's only attracted to a doll named Mochi. In one of the interviews, Jia said that his real girlfriends always ask for too much, but Mochi never asked anything of him. Well, Mr. Tianrong, it's not alive. What do you expect? He even said that he never kissed or actually had sex with her because he's afraid it might damage the sensitive skin. For him, Mochi is the perfect companion and a very easygoing date. Shia treats her lavishly, and he loves dressing her up before taking pictures. Mochi owns 20 sets of expensive clothes and 10 pairs of shoes. He stated that if someone asked him to rate her out of 100, he would give her a thousand. He adds that living with her every day is pure bliss and that he is beyond happy. Number 6. Pillow Love How many of you like watching anime? Some dedicated anime fans get life-size pillows of their favorite characters to sleep with, or in this case, marry. Lee Jin Gyu from South Korea married his pillow. As a big fan of Magical Girl, Lyrical Nanoha, and loves one character named Fate Testarossa, so he purchased a full coverage pillow of Fate and slowly fell in love with it, truly, madly, and deeply. Guess it really was Fate. He dated it for six years before tying the knot. Lee, who was living a happy marriage, has one big advantage. He doesn't have to spend much on other pillows. The news was so fascinating that the Korean media filmed their wedding. Most people find this love story strange and even said he might be doing it just as a publicity stunt. Lee brushed off all the criticism and stated that he's very much in love with his wife and that his love for her will never change. He named his pillow Dakimura and said he goes on dates with her to malls, amusement parks, public parks, and many other places. Wherever he goes, she comes. As long as he's happy, that's all that matters. We think his waifu would agree. There are some really crazy relationships on our list today. If you like what you've seen, give us a like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Number five, daddy issues. Most of the stories so far have just been strange, but this next one is borderline illegal. John and Jenny Deeves, the father and daughter duo, were in a relationship for six years. Jenny, who was John and his first wife's child, were separated after the divorce. According to Dorothy, his third wife, she always encouraged John to stay in touch with Jenny since she was his first child, but little did Dorothy know that the touchy reunion would turn into an intimate one. Jenny and John said that they had not been in contact with each other until the reunion in 2000. The daughter who was living with John and Dorothy started having sexual relationships within the same house. The 12 years of marriage between John and Dorothy ended when he decided to move in with Jenny. In an interview, Jenny said that while living with her dad, she suddenly started seeing him as a man. She adored how loving, caring, and respectful he was and slowly began developing feelings for him. Dorothy tried to separate them with the help of her mom, but failed every time. They even lodged complaints against them to the police, who were also after them. The couple escaped to South Australia, where they raised Jenny's children from under previous marriage and even had their own daughter. The couple split after court ordered a ban on such relationships in 2008, but started living together in 2009, casually in an open marriage. Number four, modern day Oedipus. If you ever took sophomore English in the States, then you might have heard the tale of Oedipus and his mother. Some of you know him as the famous King of Thebes, and some of you may know him for having feelings for his mother. Monica and Caleb, a mother and son duo who live in New Mexico, got into a relationship after reuniting. Monica, at the age of 16, had to give up Caleb for adoption. The duo reunited in 2015 after finding each other on Facebook. At first, it was an emotional mother and son reunion, but later, it turned into an incestuous relationship. Monica, 36, said in an interview that when she saw Caleb, 20 at the time, after so long, she knew he was the one. She had butterflies after seeing him, and that it was love at first sight, but at the beginning, it was a motherly love. 
She even said that the moment Caleb saw Monica, he ran towards her and hugged her while crying. After living together, both soon started having romantic feelings towards each other, and she was the one who confessed first. She even stated that her family loves him as well. Due to incest being illegal in America, the duo faced lawsuits and even pled guilty. The police found them living in a mobile home, and they were ordered to stay apart for 18 months and were also given three years of probation. While facing the lawsuits, Monica said that the love for each other is so strong, nothing can come between them. Not the kind of love story we ever want to hear again. Number 3. Doggo Love Who doesn't love dogs? These cute, innocent, mischievous creatures are always ready to melt our hearts. But some people take their loves for dogs too far. Amanda Rogers married her dog Sheba in 2012. She was married to a man a few decades prior, but it ended within a few months. Soon after the breakup, the Cupid Arrow hit for the second time, making her realize her true love was for Sheba. The duo got married and split Croatia in front of 200 people. She said that Sheba, who had been with her for years, always made her laugh and comforted her whenever she felt low and that she couldn't think of a better partner. One day she got down on her knee and proposed to Sheba and she could tell that the answer was yes, as her dog wagged her tail. Just like any other wedding, Amanda shared a kiss to close the deal. She even threw a bouquet of flowers. Amanda stated that even though she knew the wedding wasn't legal, it was still enough to make her happy. Shiva is always kind and loves her companion very much. So much for finding your perfect match. Number 2. I Need You Both How many of you have heard of polyamory? If you haven't, don't worry. Polyamory means having more than one intimate relationship at the same time. 33-year-old Maria Butsky, who lives with her husband, 37-year-old Paul, and her two children, also lives with her 36-year-old lover, Peter. When she started having an affair with Peter, Maria left Paul to live with him, but soon started missing her husband and kids and realized she couldn't live without them. So she ended up living with both, and now they are one big, happy family. Maria said people might find it weird and think how could she possibly love two men, but she simply couldn't choose between them. She wholeheartedly loved both of them, when she left Paul, she felt a huge emptiness in her life, and thinking about a life without Peter was also heartbreaking. Paul said that he was really devastated when he first found out about the affair, but then he got to know Peter and realized how many things the both of them have in common. Paul feels like Peter is a surrogate dad to his kids. There is also no jealousy between them, and they manage to work like a team. Maria even said that both Peter and Paul don't sleep with her daily, but she sure does have sexual relationships with both the men. Peter sleeps on the sofa, while Paul sleeps in a room upstairs, and Maria sleeps with her eldest daughter. And number one, real life Game of Thrones. Who hasn't heard of Game of Thrones? One of the more controversial couples from the show was Cersei and Jaime Lannister. The sister and brother duo had three children together. Susan Karaluski and Patrick Steubing could be called the real Cersei and Jaime Lannister. The brother and sister were separated when Patrick was just three years old, along with his mother. His father, who was an alcoholic, attacked him with a knife. He was then adopted four years later by another family. Patrick, in the year 2000, was reunited with his sister and mother. He then later fell in love with Susan, who was 16 at the time. They started having sexual relations after their mother passed away in 2001, and they even had a child together. Patrick was actually sent to jail over the kid. When he was away, Susan was in a relationship with another man that also led to a baby. Soon after coming out of jail, Susan gave the right of this child to Patrick as well, and they went on to have two more children. There was a lawsuit against them. Three out of four children are now looked after in foster care. Sadly, two of the children have disabilities. Their lawyer stated how risky it is to keep them apart from their parents. Patrick stated how the government has violated their life. The law against incestual relationships with brothers and sisters doesn't state that they can't protect their families. Number 10. Woman Brutally Stabbed by Tender Date Everyone wants to find that special someone to settle down with, but one fairy tale ended in a murder investigation for 23-year-old Molly McLaren. Molly was a young girl that balanced her studies, family, and friends. The only thing she felt was missing in her life was a boyfriend. That's when she turned to Tinder and swiped right on warehouse worker Joshua Stimson. They chatted for three months before finally deciding to meet. Soon, the 26-year-old Joshua became Molly's first proper boyfriend, and the couple became pretty close. Joshua even quit his job at the warehouse to spend more time with Molly's family, which over time put a strain on their relationship. He started to manipulate Molly, which made her feel uncomfortable. She soon broke up with him, and he wasn't exactly happy with her. 
he went on to stalk, threaten, and leave obscene comments on Molly's social media platforms. Molly had even raised a complaint with the police just two days prior to her tragic end. She was feeling both traumatized and terrorized by her ex's actions. So on one unfortunate day, June 27, 2018, when Molly was sitting in her car outside the gym, Joshua decided to pay her a visit. He waited for Molly with two knives concealed in a bag and stabbed her 75 times in broad daylight. He walked away from the car park, covered in blood. A passerby tried to rush to the crime scene to save Molly, but it was too late. Stimson was taken to court, found guilty of murder, and sentenced to jail for 26 years. Number 9. Tinder Date in Turkey During Military Coup Spontaneity in life is a welcome thing, especially to get away from the mundane and boring routines we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But this Tinder Date story is the next level of spontaneity. We are talking about flying to another country with someone you just met. 22-year-old Phil Stevenson from Darlington, England was bored one day in 2016 and went on the app to look for something casual when he matched with the girl. The girl he matched with offered a free ticket to Turkey as her family backed out from the holiday trip at the last minute. So without any hesitation, he accepted the offer because who would pass on a free vacation? Their first meeting happened at the airport. Can you imagine how awkward it would be on that three-hour flight? However, the girl did try to hold his hand, which made Phil a little uncomfortable since he just wanted something casual. It turned out they couldn't have picked a worse time to visit Turkey as they arrived to a plot to overturn the government. This meant they were stuck in their hotel room until things blew over. Now you'd think this would be a good way for things to work out between the two romantically, but the reality is Phil didn't even like the girl. He was just interested in the free trip. The whole situation just dragged on until the flights were available for them to go back to their country. When asked if he would pull off the stunt again if given a chance, he wholeheartedly agreed that he might just do it again. It was definitely an adventure. Number 8. Tinder Froyo Date Experiment Have you ever wanted to prove a point so bad that you'd go above and beyond what normally would be deemed right? Well, if you haven't, then you could take a page or two from these young college students who conducted a social media experiment in 2017 to make the co-founder of Tinder, Justin Mateen, see how many bots and spam accounts were on his app. So before we get into the nitty gritty of how they conducted their experiment, you've got to understand how the dating app works. The app is user-friendly and gives limited information to outsiders like your location or your music taste. You also get to choose what to write in your bio. To create an account, you just need an email. So back to the experiment, the guy created a fake account and named the girl Sammy. They used photos from Kendall Fine Miss Teen USA and invited people to a Froyo place in Utah. So obviously, when you put a Miss Teen's image on Tinder, you are bound to get matches. She got 250. When the day of the date finally arrived, you can imagine the crowd of men thronging at the Froyo place. Anxious guys waited and were scattered all around the area, in the parking lot, around the tables, and inside the store. The three young college students were astonished at how many men showed up. The guys from Tinder were rightly upset with the fact that they got stood up on the date. Apparently, there were 70 guys in all. Now that's quite some pull for a few images of a pretty girl. Number 7. Chivalry is dead. So here's the 101 on dating. When you're on a date and the bill comes, it makes sense to either split the bill in half or pay for what you've ordered. Your date might offer to pay for your meal, which comes at a good sign they want to see you again. But one pair on a Tinder date didn't have such a congenial ending to their evening. The date happened to be at a coffee shop, an expensive one at that. As both were Dominican, they initially hit it off very well. What's more, the guy was pretty good looking. The girl ordered one coffee and didn't eat anything else, as she had plans to go and meet up with some of her other friends. On the other hand, the guy had other plans. He kept holding her back and talking to her so she wouldn't leave. This isn't even the worst part. During this time, he munched on almost six appetizers and a coffee, all while conversing. When the bill which rounded off to $100 finally came, the guy asked whether they should split it, and the girl laughed in response, thinking it most certainly was a joke. But the guy was serious. Thankfully, she stood up to him, which made him angry. Just to get out of the situation, she handed him the money and left. But she could still hear him screaming, even when she left the coffee shop. What a nightmare. She probably will never step foot in that coffee shop again. Number 6. Plot of You Comes to Life there's a popular Netflix series about an obsessed stalker named Joe Goldberg that will stop at nothing to protect the woman he's in love with. He'll even go as far as murder. If you're familiar with the show, the next story might ring an uncanny bell. 
a woman met a guy on Tinder, had a lovely time with him, and went back to his place to hang out. This is when her instincts kicked in, and she got a strange vibe from the guy. So following her instincts, she came up with some excuses and left his house. While she was driving towards her house, she noticed in the rearview mirror a car following her, which obviously freaked her out. She called one of her guy friends and asked him to be outside on his driveway. She decided to go to her friend's house instead, since she was feeling a bit nervous. When she got to his house and got out of the car, they saw a car drive by. Seeing the car pass by gave her a moment of relief, and she went inside to hang out with her friend. But that peace was disrupted shortly when they heard a knock on the door. The guy took the lead, with the girl sheltered behind him, holding a knife. Can you guess who was at the door? Surprise, surprise, it was her date, as you had already guessed. He had only come to return the earring that she had left behind at his place. The story isn't even over yet. When she noticed the earring a few days later, she realized that it wasn't even hers. Needless to say, she never contacted the guy again and deleted her Tinder account. Talk about creepy. If you like what you're watching, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. Number 5. Woman Falls Off Balcony During a Tinder Date Tinder is used to find someone you want to spend a good time with, but in the case of 26-year-old Warina Wright, the opposite happened. She didn't realize that she swiped right to her own murderer. In 2014, the pair met in Gold Coast, Australia when they were attending a wedding. They hit it off well, and they decided to hang out at the man's apartment. After a few drinks, the man demanded that Warina couldn't leave the apartment. This freaked Warina out, and she kept protesting, demanding to leave. The man bluntly denied. He even recorded the entire conversation between them without realizing it. And in that recording, you can hear him strangle her. Warina was locked out on his balcony, so she wouldn't be able to leave. That's when, in an attempt to escape, she tried to climb down to the ground. This made the man mad, and he pushed her off the 14th floor balcony, leading to her death. Currently, the man is on trial, and there is an ongoing investigation as to what happened that night. But the main part of the investigation is the audible recording the man took by mistake, which clearly reveals that he did verbally and physically threaten to harm her. If convicted, the man may receive a sentence for life. We hope he does. Number 4. Excessive Messaging Finding a good match is quite challenging, so when Brittany, 24, was matched with another girl a few hours away, she just had to accept what she could get. They started to message each other, and things got off well. They even ended up dating for a few weeks. But one day, Brittany couldn't meet her date when she texted, since it was her sister's birthday. The dejected girl who was refused a meeting felt so offended that she wrote a seven-page long emotionally blackmailing message. She told Brittany that God intended them to be together. She sent her lengthy voice message of herself while drunk, crying, and singing sad, sappy songs since she couldn't handle the rejection. After this crazy episode, the communication between the two stopped for a while. Then, out of the blue, the rejected girl sent a picture of a burning letter to Brittany of a bucket list. At the end of the bucket list, it mentioned something about taking Brittany to Sweden. Not much can be made out from the letter because it was set on fire. We take it that Brittany did her best to avoid and cut all ties with her psycho tender match. Number 3. Price Tagger Everyone's biggest worry with online dating is either getting murdered or catfished. And one girl named Shelby had these exact fears when she started talking to a guy that she started to really like. He invited her out on a date, and she started to feel anxious. Thankfully, her date looked exactly like his picture on the app. But the downside was that he came to the date with basketball shorts on, which isn't exactly the greatest first impression. Anyway, she persisted through the night, but the only thing the guy could talk about was his six-figure salary, and that he had a friend who owns a restaurant, and that he earns $100,000 a year. So one would assume a person who earns that much would take you to a half-decent place, right? But nope, not this guy. He took her to a taco shack. He kept going on and on, so she tried to rush eating her taco to get out of the horrible date. After it was over, Shelby headed to her car, but obviously the guy couldn't read between the lines and thought it was a good idea to invite her over to his place. He couldn't hold himself back and pinned her down onto the car and started making out with Shelby then and there. When they were about to kiss, Shelby did the unthinkable and started laughing into his mouth. The guy gets weirded out and backed away. After he moved, she dashed to the car and never spoke to the guy again. Like who would? Number 2. Your Worst Nightmare Come Alive Can you imagine going on a date and the person already knew your deepest, darkest secret? Well, this happened to Victoria Bright. She matched with a guy on Tinder and they hit it off on many dates. 
She was delighted that he was pretty attractive and financially stable. After the dates, they finally slept together. The next day, the guy dropped a huge bombshell and told her that he knew her secret. This completely shocked her and she was wondering which secret he was talking about. Initially, she thought it was about her first marriage, which she knew wasn't a secret since she was open about it. It turns out he knew about her time in juvenile prison and during her younger days, she was hanging out with some rough crowds. Apparently, her date wasn't even interested in meeting her until he showed her profile to one of his friends. That's how she got to know that he was friends with her ex. And number one, missing celebrity after Tinder date. The former host of The View, Rosie O'Donnell's teenage daughter, went missing. So how did she go missing? Well, thanks to Tinder, she went out on a date and didn't ever come home. Her mom resorted to social media to try and seek help to find out more about her daughter's whereabouts. Turns out, she was hiding in an attic of a drug dealer's house out of her own will. Can you imagine the relief and the shock Rosie felt when she found her daughter, but also that she was doing drugs? So now the mystery is solved. It turns out it wasn't a date, but an invitation to get drugs from some guy on Tinder. Through an interview, she had mentioned that she wasn't dating the guy, but he was just an acquaintance. So if you thought Tinder was just a dating app, hopefully you now know the truth. There are people out there who are using the app service as their personal drug delivery portal. Thanks for watching. Would you rather go viral for your embarrassing mugshot or get booed off the stage during a talent competition? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.